Good morning. I hope to see you all at 11 a.m. on Apollo 24/7's Health Hour. We're going to talk everything about diabetes management with Apollo expert Dr. Ravi Shankar. See you there with your family and friends. Sharp 11 a.m. Good morning. I hope to see you all at 11 a.m. on Apollo 24/7's Health Hour. We're going to talk everything about diabetes management with Apollo expert Dr. Ravi Shankar. See you there with your family and friends. Sharp 11 a.m. Good morning. I hope to see you all at 11 a.m. on Apollo 24/7's Health Hour. We're going to talk everything about diabetes management with Apollo expert Dr. Ravi Shankar. See you there with your family and friends. Sharp 11 a.m. It's always been there, standing between you and your health, a wall between a pain that won't disappear and a doctor who magically appears. between a long wait on a hospital bench and staying right where you are at home between finding yourself out of medicines and finding them at your doorstep whatever the time between years of health records all over the place and all your records in one organized access from anywhere place between your current regimen and the recommended routine the wall we don't need it anymore say hello to apollo 247 this is india's largest end to end omni channel healthcare ecosystem designed to touch more lives than ever before and delivering its promise in three important ways 
one listen talk to us anytime from anywhere we've got 7000 doctors and 30000 healthcare professionals listening to advise we'll give you expert advice advice you can rely on because it comes from india's number one healthcare provider three assist we bring you india's largest health network of pharmacies clinics hospitals and health insurance experts 20 million people already trust us for their care and a further 50000 people are discovering this every day apollo 24/7 expertise is for everyone good morning namaste and welcome to apollo 24/7's health hour apollo 24/7's health hour has been so much informative and it's spreading positivity and awareness that we are feeling really empowered it's always about information i feel that we all should be having and that is power in our hands and today we are going to talk about diabetes management which is crucial because india is the second largest home for a diabetic population in the world as we all know and as we are celebrating diabetic uh, diabetes week and the diabetes month we here have an endocrinologist who is going to brief us about diabetes and management dr ravi shankar will show, join us uh, pretty soon on the show and you can ask him all the questions and queries on this show you can uh, type all your questions you can chat with the doctor directly i can take up these questions with the uh, doctor and also i will have a health quiz i'll ask you three questions where you can win prizes you can type the answers in the chat box if you are the lucky winner you will be getting a gift from apollo 247 Also, there's a very sweet news waiting for you all. And uh, if you have been following the uh, Apollo 247's campaign, you must be knowing what the sweet news is about. But please hold on; I'll give you the sweet, we, uh, sweet news towards the end of it. You stay with us till uh, till the end of the show. We are going to give you a discount voucher and a gift coupon as well. So please stay with us. And today, I would love to start the show by reminding you about Vaccine Tracker, guys. There's so much. such sudden buzz about vaccine everywhere the vaccine is getting ready it should be ready in whatever time two three months time it should be ready but apollo hospitals is gearing up to give 1 million vaccines every day to deliver 1 million vaccines every day so that entire indian population can be reached but are we ready we should also be ready i joined the vaccine tracker list from apollo 247 i have put my family members especially the ones who are uh with pre existing diseases i'm getting updates continuously so you also can join the vaccine tracker it's quite simple you can scan the qr code on the uh, uh, on the screen that is or you can visit apollo247.com and you can find it out by using uh the hashtag battleground vaccine so that's it about it please join the vaccine tracker and be ready once the vaccine is ready let's start the show guys diabetes is something that we all want to know and manage So we have an expert endocrinologist joining us. We have Dr. Ravi Shankar Garu, who is a senior endocrinologist at Apollo Hospitals, Dubli Hills, Hyderabad, who is MBBS, MRCB from UK, CCT General Medicine, and Diabetes Endocrinology from UK, who specializes in treatment of diabetes and lifestyle diseases, who's trained and worked in UK for a decade, who's very passionate about teaching and clinical research and patient education, which which makes him all the more special. Welcome, Dr. Ravi Shankar Garu. Good morning. Good morning, Jansi Garu. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Welcome once again on the show. And this show is is really very informative. My audience who have joined me already on the show have uh, a great track record of asking and engaging important questions, which not only helps them but also to benefits larger po- population as well. That's great. That's great. Once again, and I see that you are all dressed in blues. Any special occasion? Yeah, as you previously mentioned, Ms. Jansi, uh, 14th of November happens to be World Diabetes Day, and this mm-hmm. is celebrated mm-hmm. annually. We don't celebrate just the day, but the entire month as well. It is all about awareness and spreading awareness of diabetes amongst the population. So, hence the color blue, which stands for increasing awareness, standing together in our fight against the pandemic of not COVID. I'm speaking about the pandemic of diabetes. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. So pand- pandemic, pandemic has has a synonymous has become synonymous to COVID somehow. I think it's a time we are living. As we understand that COVID has some relationship with diabetes and it might affect that some kind of news for us. 
But the important good news and the positive news is that COVID, uh, I'm sorry, diabetes is manageable, right? Yes, Can it I is. Can I ask you a question? Is diabetes yeah. reversible? Well, um, it's a big question. So let me start with some basics. There are essentially two types of diabetes. One is called type one and second is called type two, as simple as that. There are other uh, sub varieties of diabetes such as your MODY, but we're not going to touch base on those at this juncture. Okay. Type 1 diabetes usually occurs in kids. It can also occur in adults, but it's uh, less common than type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is more common. About 90% of total diabetics have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is usually common in adults, but it is being seen in kids as well these days because of obesity. Obesity. Type, obesity. Yeah, exactly. Type 1 diabetes has to be treated with insulin only and insulin only, whereas type 2 diabetes can be treated with tablets and sometimes type 2 diabetics need insulin. So these are the essential differences. Type 1 diabetes at this current juncture can't be reversed. In the future, who knows what science does, but at this juncture, we can't reverse type 1 diabetes. But type 2 diabetes, if it is acted upon in, at an early stage, say within the first five to six years of someone developing type 2 diabetes, if they were to lead a healthy lifestyle, i.e. do exercise regularly and follow a strict dietary regime under the supervision of endocrinologists, physicians, dietitians, they would be able to reverse their type 2 diabetes. And it has been shown beautifully in the form of clinical trials as well. Just to quote one, there is a, a very popular clinical trial which has been published in Lancet a while ago. It's called direct clinical trial. And this has been conducted in the Northeast of England and also in Scotland, wherein they found that they could reverse, as in they could stop the medications, be it uh, the oral uh, diabetes medications, and sometimes even the blood pressure medications of these patients, because they were able to decrease their weight using a strict uh, low caloric diet. And this has been done under the supervision of dietitians and doctors. This is very important. So don't try to practice this on your own because you might end up having micronutrient deficiency and also have other problems. Hence, it has to be practiced under proper medical supervision and it is doable in most circumstances provided you act on it at an early stage. Right. I understand that this is for type 2 diabetes only. But type 1 diabetes, as I understand, is something which is insulin dependent and how much, when and how to start. Are they, is the type 1 diabetes also reversible once you get onto insulin? Uh, unfortunately, type 1 diabetics can't stop their insulin and should never stop their insulin because they can end up in a very serious complication called diabetic ketoacidosis if they were to stop insulin. For that matter, even um, most type 2 diabetics may not be able to stop their insulin, but there are selected type 2 diabetics who might be able to cut down their insulin doses or even stop their insulin. For instance, if at all someone were to have a myocardial infarction, that means heart attack, or if someone were to be pregnant, or someone were to have an infection, they might need insulin temporarily. We're speaking about type 2 diabetics. Here. But when they're out of the woods, that means once the pregnancy is over, once they're out of the hospital, out of their infection, out of their uh, myocardial infarction, i.e. heart attack, we should be able to stop their insulin in most circumstances. Right. So right. in certain circumstances in type 2 diabetes, we use insulin as a temporary measure. Also, as I previously mentioned, if somebody were to have type 2 diabetes, very obese and have insulin resistance, they might need insulin temporarily. Uh, if they were to engage in a healthy lifestyle, i.e. good diet, exercise, sleep, etc., and if they were to reduce their weight, they would be able to stop their medications and sometimes it happens with insulin as well. I repeat the uh, phrase, sometimes it happens with insulin as well. Right. So right. you mentioned sleep twice in your uh, uh, information. And also I remember your last session where you were, uh, you, only one medication that you would advise to everybody is sleep well. Your sleep yeah. mantra is what you always carry. So how is good sleep and good exercise related to diabetes? See, when we use the word uh, healthy lifestyle, these are words actually, not one word. Healthy means, as we all know, something which is pertaining to good health. Lifestyle means as to how we lead our life, how we, uh, what time we wake up, what sort of uh, exercise we do, what foods we eat, how frequently uh, we go to the gym or go to the sports arena or do a walking. And not to forget the most essential thing, sleep. 
Sleep is something which I'm very passionate about. See, gone are the days when uh, people used to assume, look, somebody is lazy and sleeping all the time. We're not asking people to sleep all the time. That's not quite what I mean when I say sleep. What we mean is timely sleep at say night 10 o'clock or half 10, waking up in the morning at say half five or six o'clock. That means our body needs rest and we need to give our body, mind and soul some rest, which happens only when we sleep. And this is very essential to prevent obesity to prevent heart attacks, and of course, to prevent um, diabetes as well. Yes. That's the yes. reason why I have emphasized on the word sleep. Sleep discipline is very important. A regular sleep cycle is important. Sleep hygiene in your bedroom is important as well. It's essential not to carry our gadgets, be it the laptops, be it the OTT platforms or your mobile phones into your workplace. Uh, you're yes. supposed to yes. sleep there and do what you're supposed to do. Perfect. Size of course. Which is very, very important. Yeah, it is. Right. Uh, doctor, you were also mentioning about obesity, especially in children and in the population. While I say that India is the second largest population of diabetics in the world, uh, is it our lifestyle or is it our genetics? What contributes? Is it obesity? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a combination of factors. Unfortunately, we don't carry the best genes when it comes to diabetes risk or obesity risk. Okay. And more to it, we have embraced the not so healthy lifestyle of the Western population. What used to be cycling to a workplace or what used to be walking to the roadside grocery shop has now been replaced by taking a car or a bike. Uh, when I say or bike, ordering uh, online. I'm, I'm not speaking about cycling, I'm speaking about motorbike here, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. We're not providing any, any of our bodies any exercise when we do that. On top of it, games have been replaced by online games. I mean, come on, for heaven's sake, when we say games, it means physical activity. We don't mean uh, playing online. games online or playing with our gadgets. And kids are the most effective because education, studies, uh, online games have taken over what used to be a good one to two hour evening session of um, playground games. Hence the reason obesity has taken over even kids. Not to forget the junk foods, the processed foods, be it the burgers, pizzas, the soft drinks, what not. All these have added to the good old jalebis and uh, the Indian sweets as well. So we're not just eating our in traditional Indian sweets, but also the junk from the West. So it's all processed food everywhere. Hence the reason why obesity has taken over as a pandemic in India. Hence the reason. <laughs> Why diabetes, when I say diabetes, I mean type 2 diabetes has taken over, not just adult population, but also kids. Hence the reason why we need to be aware of not just COVID, but also this dreaded, long-lasting pandemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Right. So, Dr. Right. the question before I get into the chat box. A lot of questions already, but uh, as I said, as I started my line saying that, uh, COVID has a relationship to diabetes and it's more one with diabetes has to watch out with COVID. Is that true? And how do I need to manage? So people with diabetes are not, I repeat it, people with diabetes are not at increased risk of contracting COVID. They're just as much at risk of contracting COVID as non-diabetics. Oh, but having oh. said that, if a diabetic were to contract COVID, then the risk of complications, including death, unfortunately, is pretty higher compared with those who do not have diabetes. And to add to this, there are some medications which are used in the treatment of uh, some COVID conditions, especially the moderately uh, severe ones and the severely severe ones and the hospitalized ones, wherein they give corticosteroids in order to decrease the effect of COVID on the body. And these corticosteroids, like your dexamethasone, prednisolone, or methylprednisolone can have a bearing on the blood sugar levels, even in non-diabetics, and they can actually uh, push them towards the diabetes side. If a person were to be diabetic already, they're at higher risk of having very high blood sugar levels, and having such high blood sugar levels would not help the COVID status as well. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why people who do have diabetes need to be extra vigilant and need to take appropriate precautions to ensure that the blood sugar levels are under good control, to ensure that 
their blood sugar levels are tracked by means of glucometer readings checked periodically and ensure that they are checked periodically by their endocrinologist or physician in terms of their blood glucose levels so what i understand so is uh, thing is you don't need to worry about covid but manage your diabetes well so the panic is not about diabetes uh, covid but it's about diabetes we need to be careful about covid there is no doubt whatsoever whatsoever about it but having said that we need to be cautious and careful about our diabetes as well because covid is going to stay here for a little while or god knows how longer and if we don't take care of our diabetes we might unfortunately succumb to the various complications of diabetes be it retinopathy that means problems pertaining to your eyes problems pertaining to your kidneys nephropathy neuropathy that means problems pertaining to your nerves not to forget heart attacks brain strokes erectile dysfunctions and the list goes on so we need to take care of what is existing already you diabetes it's due respect remember we're in the midst of a big pandemic of diabetes and obesity not just the pandemic of uh, covid and we need to ensure that the other pandemic is taken care of as well okay okay uh yeah uh, uh, there is an echo while i'm speaking um i there is that technical difficulty from my side it's okay ma'am don't worry please go ahead yeah please go okay. uh audience people in the echo i try to mute certain things but i will try and see that my audible i am audible clearly please uh, let me know in the chat box if it's not clear well, you you could please carry on please carry on. thanks ravi garu uh, ravi garu my first question uh, today from the chat box is from mr vishwanath agarwal he is 59 years of age and his fasting sugar is in the range of 110 to 120 pp that's post is 160 to 180 do i need any medication well uh, we need an extra bit of uh, information here as to how you had diabetes what medications you have been taking what your three month sugar average hp a1c is so on and so forth but based on the limited information that you gave us they look okay to me but having said that we need uh, that extra bit of information so as to guide you in the right direction okay so this, okay. Is, so this is not enough yeah. if you have uh, some more information to share with us please go ahead vishwanath garu and uh, type in the chat box right uh, what can we eat in pre diabetic uh, conditions after lunch my sugar levels are 170 tulsi kewadia is asking this question see pre diabetes is a condition which is in between normality and diabetes that means if somebody were to be not having quite normal blood glucose levels but not having such high blood glucose levels that are in the diabetic range we call it pre diabetes that means you're just about to jump into the diabetes territory if you don't take care um, of yourself and this is what is defined as pre diabetes or impaired fasting gl glycemia or impaired glucose tolerance in posh medical terms but in simple words you're somewhere in between normality and uh, the diabetes state so what is dangerous about pre diabetes state is if you don't take care of your diet and exercise well you may end up being diabetic pretty soon hence the reason why you ought to be extra vigilant than a person who is in the normal territory and do a bit of more extra um, exercise and uh, follow some strict diet as well uh, coming to your specific question as to what diet you need to follow cut down on your junk processed foods don't eat more calories than required if in doubt speak with your uh, physician endocrinologist or dietitian who can guide you as to how many calories you need per day obviously you, you don't have to necessarily weigh your uh, food on scales daily that's not quite what i'm saying use some common sense cut down on your rice portion because rice is something which we all indians eat in very very uh, high quantities especially the white rice because it adds a lot of caloric burden to our diets and of course that leads to obesity as well not to forget about the refined um, carbohydrates that we consume in the form of sugars jaggery uh honey what not so cut down on these try to eat healthy diet um a timely breakfast timely lunch timely dinner these are as important as um eating the right foods and of course have healthy snacks in between in the form of fruits nuts uh etc etc right right as you were asking this question answering this question i was looking at a question from sandeep who says karela juice or methi can these be consumed to get the sugar levels down 
This is a very good question. Let me try to dissect these question, questions into two answers. First about methi. Yes, methi might slightly help uh, diabetics in controlling their blood sugar levels. But the question is, how much methi can you eat in a day? Can you eat a kilo of methi a day? Can you eat, um, um, I would say, a big portion of um, methi a day? It's, it's practically not possible. And even if you were to eat such high quantities, remember your tummy is going to get upset. God knows what such high quantities do to your uh, heart, liver, kidneys, because no scientific studies have been done. And not to forget that the benefit might be very minimal. So I think um, it would be over ambitious to expect that you eat a lot of methi daily and expect that your sugar control levels would get perfect. So that's about methi. Coming to Kerala, Karela juice, which is called Kakar Kai in our local area, isn't it? Uh, people do consume uh, this uh, in industrial quantities, assuming that the bitter taste of that Karela juice combats the sweet disease of diabetes. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. I wish life had took that simple, but unfortunately it isn't. So Karela juice has no scientifically proven role whatsoever in treating diabetes. Let me leave it there. Okay, okay. okay. Also another interesting question from a registered, pre registered user. We, we sent a link to register and there was this interesting question which I thought would be the right uh, uh, time to ask this question. How about sugar substitutes like jaggery and honey? Well, um, so sugar substitutes are divided into artificial sweeteners, uh, which I'll try to answer after this, and uh, jaggery and honey. See, many people are again of this impression thinking that jaggery is better than uh, your white sugar, sugar. In, yeah. Yeah, in terms of increasing the uh, blood sugar levels. Unfortunately not. It might contain a bit of iron, which is good for the body, but that's it. It also increases your blood sugar levels as much as your um, white sugar or refined. Sugar. Sugar. So please don't be of any false impression that jaggery is good for diabetics. And same applies to honey as well, unfortunately. It might contain some extra micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, but that does not necessarily make it any safer than your sugar in terms of increasing the blood sugar risk in diabetics. Coming to artificial sweeteners, yes, we do have a lot of artificial sweeteners in the market. Some of them are reasonably safe, but having said that, we don't still advise uh, people to consume them in very high quantities because many people are of the impression that they can consume them in very high quantities. And remember that it's a bit of a slightly unregulated or dysregulated market as well when it comes to artificial sweeteners. So if you want to consume artificial sweeteners, you're fine, but consume them in very small quantities. Don't consume them too liberally, like you know, uh, eating all the so-called uh, um, I would say sugar-free sweets and all that. Remember, all the stuff that goes into the sugar-free sweets is not just about sugar and not sugar, but also about a lot of fat that goes into it. True. A lot of oil and ghee goes into it, which is not good for, good for your obesity and for the cholesterol levels as well. So take all this into consideration when you're consuming sugar-free sweets or your artificial sweeteners. Right. And the products made it. Yes, uh, I will keep that in mind, even if I'm not diabetic yet. So I should keep that in mind because healthy people also tend to switch to sugar-free sweets or sugar-free uh, 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 sachets, think that it is healthy, which might have other repercussions too. Totally agree with you, totally agree. Yes. Dr. Ravi Shankar Garu, this question is from Mr. Narsimha Raju Dichpalli. How can take care of uh, diabetes in winter, saying that diabetic foot problems increase in winter. Yeah, I've written an article um, on this uh, topic and did a video on this as well in one of the YouTube uh, videos. In winter, diabetics um, have a tendency to slightly relax, just like any other population. Uh, I call it laziness, um, with all due politeness, and think, look, uh, it's cold outside. Let me actually skip my workout today or exercise or jog or walking, which they routinely do. It's, it's not safe to do so because Remember, just because it is winter outside doesn't necessarily mean that your blood sugar levels would be under control. So whether it is winter, summer, or autumn, I think we need to make time amidst our busy schedules, irrespective of how the weather is, and do some exercise. So that's one uh, basic point. The second point is about taking care of feet. Remember, feet can develop a lot of cracks, especially during winter season. If you don't apply adequate moisturizer, just like other parts of the body as well, what can develop is cracks in the feet, which can lead into ulcers and infections. So be extra aware of these, not to forget that uh, winter brings with it a lot of festivities as well. 
uh, already we had Diwali uh, during the autumn and uh, um, winter interface. Christmas is about that. Exactly. We're soon going to have the English New Year followed by Sankranti or Pongal. And it is festive season as well. So be careful about what you eat and how you exercise. And of course, as I previously mentioned, be careful about uh, the uh, heel cracks, making sure that you apply a lot of moisturizer, wear, wear uh, socks or stockings as may be appropriate as well. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's also a warning for me. That's also <laughs> inspiring that I should be getting out, not let the winter blues set in. Thank you. That applies to every one of us. Of course, yes. All right. Next question is from Prem Kumar, Dr. Garu. Uh, Prem Kumar Lazar asks, due to uh, diabetes, my weight has reduced from 86 to 79. Can I recover this weight even my legs and hands are becoming thinner? Okay. So we need to know what your height is uh, and calculate your body mass index. Because a healthy body mass index is somewhere around 23, 22, 20. Uh, I mean, anything more than 23 is slightly up. The higher you go, say, if your body mass index uh, weight divided by height in meter square um, is called BMI. And if the BMI is higher than what it should be, that, that puts one to increase risk of not just diabetes, but other lifestyle diseases as well, such as heart disease, high cholesterol, blood pressure, the list goes on. And remember, you said that you lost your excess body weight. The question is as to how you lost it. Did you lose it by following a healthy diet? Over what span have you lost it? And the other question is, um, were you following any um, healthy dietary schedule, exercise schedule to lose it? Or is it something that you inadvertently lost it? If you lost it inadvertently in a very short span of time, we need to think into, uh, take into consideration as to what your blood sugar levels are. For example, if your blood sugar levels are sky high, you may lose weight. That's not a healthy way to lose weight. Because um, you tend to really go, to, go into a negative um, metabolic balance. We call it catabolic state. And that's not good for your body. So we need to take all these into consideration as to what your blood sugar levels are, whether there is something else that we are missing. For example, if you're losing any protein from your kidneys as to uh, what your thyroid blood tests are, whether you have any other health ailments. And putting all this together, we can guide you as to whether the weight loss is healthy or is it unhealthy and as to whether we need to look at um, you know, um, more um, in, in, in a more serious way. But then muscle wasting does happen in diabetes? Doctor? Muscle wasting can happen in diabetes. And remember, even with healthy individuals or in diabetics, when we try to lose weight in general, say somebody is 80 kilos, and if that person is following a healthy uh, dietary schedule and trying to exercise daily and trying to lose weight, yes, we lose more of fat, but, but we tend to lose some muscle as well, especially if we don't eat adequate protein, especially if we don't do resistance exercises. Remember, most of us uh, try to go to the gym, just do the elliptical or treadmill and come out. Okay. And we, and we think that uh, muscles are only for Salman Khan uh, and not for us. Okay. <laughs> okay. We all need some muscle, irrespective of whether we are in the movie industry or whether no, we're not in the movie industry, because muzzle helps us uh, be agile, be presentable. And of course, not to forget the fact that uh, such exercise is good for the bones as well. So we all need muzzle, especially if you're diabetic, try to have a decent amount of muzzle because that decreases your insulin resistance. When we speak about insulin resistance, if insulin resistance is high, you end up having higher blood glucose levels. And if you decrease your insulin resistance by putting on some muzzle, by shedding out the fat, then you would be able to shed your insulin resistance and decrease your insulin requirements or even tablets can come down as well. Okay, that's interesting. Here's an interesting question um, uh, from Utpal Kapoor. What level of HB1AC indicates the onset of diabetes and uh, how does one use HB1AC results to understand diabetes? A very good question. HB1C can be used as a screening tool although it does have some limitations. For example, people who are anemic or pregnant or people have uh, some abnormal hemoglobin such as hemoglobinopathies might not um, get a proper HbA1c report. But in general, if an adequately good kit is used to measure HbA1c, usually HbA1c's of say 6.5 or more are considered to be in the diabetic range. And uh, for pre-diabetes, we have different cutoffs, depending on whether you're taking the WHO cutoff or the American Diabetes Association cutoff. 
Usually it's 5.7 or more for the ADA criteria, 6.1 or more for your WHO criteria to call it pre-diabetes. But in general, HbA1c of 6.5 or more is something which we categorize as having um, diabetes. And again, it has its own limitations. It has to be taken in the context of the other factors that I mentioned, and also the fact that um, we need to see what the blood glucose levels are when we call somebody diabetic, uh, just measuring the HbA1c or glycated hemoglobin. Right. This is from Mr. Wasiullah. After medication with one, after one week of medication, my sugar levels are fasting 115 and PP is 190. Can this situation be reversed? Yeah, um, again, we need to take a lot of other factors as I previously mentioned, uh, when we speak about reversing diabetes. Firstly, we need to be aware of how long you have had diabetes, what your age is, what medications you've been on, whether you're using insulin, what sort of lifestyle you're, you're following. If um, you are somebody who has had diabetes for 10 years on insulin, and um, also uh, doing all exercise that you should do, following good diet, unlikely that we will be able to reverse your diabetes. Uh, in posh medical terms, again, we call it remission of diabetes. But if you are to be somebody who has had diabetes for only three years, not exercising much, not doing much exercise um, on only uh, one or two uh, oral medications and not on insulin, then if you were to um, follow a healthy lifestyle, follow a strict uh, dietary disciplined um, diet advocated by a dietitian or an endocrinologist or a good physician and uh, um, keep follow-ups. That's very important as well. You might be able to reverse your diabetes. All right. That's it. Sandeep Gupta, I think your question is also answered because Sandeep Gupta is 53 year old and he's on Preceba and multiple tablets. For 15 years, he's been diabetic and a very thin uh, diabetic. He also asked a similar question, and I think you have answered his question. So he wanted to know, uh, with uh, for thin diabetics with BMI in lower end of normal range, can this be reversible? The first question is, is it type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes? If it is type 1 diabetes, please do not make any false adventures or misadventures and into, into stopping insulin on your own. Please, please don't do that. You need to take the guidance of a properly trained doctor only before you even think about cutting down your insulin doses or stopping your insulin. Please do not misadventure into that territory and stop insulin on your own. First, we need to define as to whether you have type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. Even if you were to have type 2 diabetes, we need to think about the duration of diabetes and whether there is an insulin reserve in the body or not. So mm -hmm. after defining all these, would we actually think about cutting down the insulin doses, let alone stopping insulin? So please don't uh, get into such mis uh, misadventures and take uh, undue risk, please. Speaking about adventures, Vijayan Rao's question also falls into one such category, so I'll take this up here. Uh, Vijayan Rao is taking Glavos, Galvos Met Vida, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing him right, Vildaglitin metformin SCI some months back. I stopped. Can I resume taking these or should I consult my doctor? I'm a 64 year old male, have not checked my blood sugar for more than four months. Is this an adventure and a risk that he is taking? It is a misadventure, I would say. Yeah. Never stop your medications on your own. Please don't do that. Please take the help of your doctor. Please at least ask your doctor once before you think about doing something like that. See, unless you are having low blood glucose levels, okay, regularly, in which case, anyway, you need to consult your doctor and take um, the opinion of the doctor. Please do not um, go into that territory of stopping um, your medications on your own. Because if you do that, you are probably doing more harm to yourself than uh, doing any good to you. So please seek the guidance of your doctor, who will be more than happy to guide you. And then Discuss as to whether you can cut down your medication, change your medication, or stop your medication. Please. Yes, this is this is something that you have to be really serious and get yourself checked frequently. And anybody with uh, family members with diabetes, do not take it. Asha Mashi Vyavaharankadu is something that we use uh, in Telugu. So I advise and uh, request all of you to please keep a continuous monitor. And there are, uh, I suppose, Dr. Ravi Garu, there are more of easier technologies which are available. Uh, can I ask you these questions? Like, how does one understand and monitor at home with uh, the help of technology? 
yeah, we need to make good usage of the technology that is available. Okay, we've got a lot of technology at our disposal now. We've got a lot of beautiful um, techniques by which we can administer insulin in a less painful way. We do have insulin pumps which can deliver insulin, especially in type 1 diabetics and in pregnant women uh, who do have gestational diabetes or already had diabetes and became pregnant. They all can, can benefit. Even some type 2 diabetics might potentially benefit from these insulin delivery technology. We also do have um, glucometers which can enable people measure their blood glucose levels at the comfort of their own home. Especially if they're fearing any low blood glucose levels or very high blood glucose levels is a very much uh, handy. Not to forget the fact that we do have CGMS, continuous glucose monitoring systems as well, which can track mm -hmm. your glucose readings every five to 15 minutes. You have heard it right. Yeah, you can track your blood glucose readings every five to 15 minutes and they can even let you know what your blood glucose reading is in real time using apps, using little fancy gadgets, and they're not that expensive as well. And these who are requires really this uh, continuous glucose monitoring? Continuous glucose monitoring is useful in many scenarios, in people who have brittle diabetes, wide fluctuations of blood glucose levels, who suspect that they're having low blood glucose levels, having very erratic blood glucose levels, if they're pregnant, or if they're people who indulge in sports activities, okay, because they need very good glucose control, but at the same time, they can't, they can't afford having low blood glucose levels, especially if they're participating in competitive sports. So all these people would benefit from continuous glucose monitoring. Also people who are fearful of pricking themselves time and again, because people hate pricking themselves uh, four to five times, sometimes even seven times a day. So all these people would benefit from continuous glucose monitoring systems. So technology is there, it is available, it is at our disposal. Of course, it, it is as good as the user. Right, thank you that additional bit of information, doctor. Here's a question from Mr. Piyush Bhatnagar. Uh, I'm a doc diabetic person for the last five years on medication. 13th December, I've been diagnosed, uh, diagnosed uh, COVID positive. My doctor asked me to observe the sugar levels daily uh, sugar is fluctuating. Sometimes it's high and sometimes it drops extremely low. I'm on insulin as advised. I want to know if I'll be able to get rid uh, of insulin after COVID and what will be the after effect of insulin on my body? Excellent question. You asked me almost 10, 15 questions. Let me try to answer them in a very generic manner. As I previously mentioned, people with um, diabetes are not at increased risk of contracting COVID compared with non-diabetics. But once they contract COVID, they would have higher blood glucose levels than, than their normal cells usually because COVID has this tendency to destroy the beta cells in the pancreas which release insulin or which secrete insulin. Also, any physiological stressful state okay, can increase the blood glucose levels. So for both these reasons, people with COVID, irrespective of whether they had diabetes in the past or not had diabetes, can have elevated blood glucose levels afresh. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to have diabetes, then their risk of having increased blood glucose levels is even higher because their baseline is higher than a non-diabetic person. Okay. And if at all a COVID um, patient were to be started on corticosteroids, which I previously mentioned, in order to treat the COVID illness, they can also increase the blood glucose levels because they can increase the insulin resistance. And during this process, some people may need insulin and insulin is very good at combating high blood glucose levels but one ought to be very cautious whilst tapering down the corticosteroids or whilst the recovery process of COVID is going on because their insulin resistance would come down. And in this process, their insulin um, requirements would come down. And their insulin, which is administered from outside, might have to be tapered down gradually under the supervision of a doctor. If they don't do that, they might end up having low blood glucose levels whilst they're recovering from their COVID illness, whilst their corticosteroids are being tapered. Most of these patients who have had COVID and who had diabetes and who needed insulin during their COVID illness might be able to come out of their insulin after their recovery. But there are some who may end up needing insulin even after they come out of their COVID illness because as I previously mentioned, in some scenarios, the virus can affect their beta cells and destroy their beta cells. So we need to be aware of this. It's not um, Asha Mashi as you previously mentioned there is proper science into it so please take the guidance of your endocrinologist or physician and please proceed accordingly right thank you 
Thank you so much for that information, Dr. Yaru. Now, Vasudha is asking this question about intermittent fasting. And will that help diabetes? Also, can she use nutrition protein, nutrition protein shake if she's yeah, two big questions in one question again. Let me try to answer intermittent fasting to begin with. What is intermittent fasting? It is very loosely defined. Okay. Some people fast a few days in a week. Okay. Um, some, some do for religious reasons as well as we know on Saturdays or other days. And uh, some do only a certain span of the day, which is called time-restricted eating. In scientific terms, we call it time-restricted eating. There is some science behind it to say that if people were to resort to time-restricted eating, there might be some changes in the mitochondria of the cells. Okay, I know I'm speaking a, a bit more uh, science here, but I'm sure most of us have learned it's about okay. uh, mitochondria. It's important to understand. So at the mitochondrial level, there are some changes that might happen for good. But having said that, there is no definitive evidence to say that intermittent fasting is better than calorie restriction. Okay, I repeat it. There is no definitive evidence to say that intermittent fasting in the long run is any better than just caloric restriction, okay? In improving either blood glucose levels, in improving blood pressure, in improving cholesterol, etc. We all know that uh, we resort to these sort of uh, fancy diets in order to achieve big weight loss, in order to control the blood glucose levels, in order to control the blood pressure and cholesterol. These are the four reasons why people go for fasting, intermittent fasting. Okay. There is a downside as well when people go for intermittent fasting, especially if they're on complex insulin regimes, they might end up having low blood glucose readings. Or if they're on medications that can cause um, low blood glucose, even oral medications, they can end up having low blood glucose readings. And there's also some um, scientific data to say that people who may um, end up doing intermittent fasting might end up having thin bones in the long run, okay? There is data in mice that can be uh, extrapolated to humans as well. So at the moment, the verdict is not out as to whether intermittent fasting is really safe, safe, okay? Compared with just ca uh, calorie restriction. So I wouldn't advocate any diabetic to start intermittent fasting without the supervision of their physician or endocrinologist because they might have end up having low blood glucose levels and it may not be sustainable in the long run. Sustainability of any fat diet, it is questionable compared with a calorie restricted diet, which is balanced and has the right micronutrients in it. Hence, one need to take this into consideration. Eating keto diet or paleo diet or any other fan. Coming to the second question, or meat shakes uh, or protein shakes. Protein uh, shakes. Protein shakes, helpful. Yes, pr uh, protein shakes can help people, especially if they're going on um, a, these fancy diets. The reason being, some of these fancy diets lack essential micronutrients. Again, it's the territory of a dietitian, a qualified dietitian to guide you on this. Uh, when people go on to strict calorie restricted diet, such as in the direct trial, which I quoted earlier, which can enable people to lose weight in a scientific manner, yes, Calorie, um, calorie restriction is very important, but supplementation in the form of right nutrients is also equally important. And that can be done using these um, build-up drinks or uh, protein drinks. But again, this has to be done in a scientific manner. It's not something which you can do by reading the internet or hear from your neighbor or from your gym colleague. I'm sorry, it's not the, it's not the right way of doing it. So uh, to sum up, was that intermittent fasting you are वो कंट्रोल मैनर में एक डाइटिशियन के सलाह के ऊपर होना चाहिए सो यू शुड नॉट टेक इट अपने आप से मत कीजिए है वो अपने आप से मत कीजिए अगर करना है तो प्रॉपर डाइटिशियन का एडवाइस लेके कीजिए दैट इज अबाउट इट आल्सो देयर लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस डॉक्टर आई वी जस्ट हैव लास्ट 5 टू 7 मिनट्स लेफ्ट सो देयर आर लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस हाउ टू डेवलप इम्यूनिटी इफ वन इज ओबेस ओबेस एंड डायबिटिक हाउ टू डेवलप uh, immunity is question from Shweta. Immunity is a buzzing word, isn't it? So everybody wants immunity once they heard about COVID. Till then, we were all fast asleep about uh, immunity. We didn't care about it. I'm, I'm just joking. Right. Whether it is COVID or non-COVID, whether we have diabetes or don't have diabetes, we all need immunity. More so if you have diabetes, because that diabetes can affect your immunity in an adverse manner. So how do you develop immunity? It's not something which you develop just like this 
or just by uh, taking a magic pill or a multivitamin supplement. No, they, they don't help boost your immunity, not in the long run at least. The way to boost your immunity is again, it all boils down to lifestyle, eating the right kind of food, a balanced diet with the right micronutrients, eating fresh fruits, with green leafy um, vegetables and fresh vegetables in a proper scientific manner and in a balanced manner. And this should be a long-term thing. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. The second aspect is about the exercise that we do or that we don't do. If you really want to boost your immunity, do exercise in a proper manner. And of course, not to forget the importance of sleep. When you sleep, all the bad hormones, bad chemicals, which are not good for you, calm down in your body. All the good hormones get secreted in adequate amount. So get adequate rest for your mind, soul, and body, right? Fourth aspect, if you're somebody who smokes, please refrain from smoking. Fourth, cut, ideally stop alcohol. Not to forget the fact that none of us should take uh, illicit drugs. That's a different story altogether. Last but not the least, try to live not a saintly life. I'm not asking all of us to live a saintly life. It's not practically possible in this materialistic world. As relaxed a life as possible. We all need to be productive, but at the same time, take into consideration the fact that we all can practice simple uh, techniques such as doing some yoga, doing some meditation, whatever we like at the convenience of our own homes and try to keep our minds, uh, I, I would say, less clustered and keep ourselves happy, okay? So this is the best way to boost your immunity. And of course, if you have diabetes, keep your um, sugar levels under control as well. So th that's the magic pill that I'm giving to you. If at all you want to take something out of today's um, talk of mine. All right. Um, that's wonderful, Doctor. And Doctor, uh, quickly, DC Jane and Mr. Radesham Dwivedi, uh, dono bhi ye puch rahe ki, what's your opinion of fruits, consumption of fruits, and also one of them have us sugar substitutes, agar natural foods mein kuch hote hai kya? See, we, we already discussed about um, sugar substitutes, so I'm not going to dwell on that. Sugar substitutes in the natural foods, that is fruits and other like yeah, dates. Stevia. Stevia is reasonably safe. It's a natural, uh, naturally available one. But don't overdo anything. And don't uh, go on binging on, again, natural uh, fruit-derived sugar sweets. Okay? That's not quite what I'm saying. But you can replace stevia um, in a sensible manner, in a, in, a, in a, I would say, in a simplified manner in your day-to-day -day, uh, foods. That's, that's not an issue if you have diabetes. Coming to your other question, which is about fruits. I love fruits. Who doesn't love fruits? They're natural. They're full of micronutrients. They're full of fiber, okay, which is what your body wants. So obviously, you need to take um, five servings of uh, fresh fruits as per WHO recommendation. But if you have diabetes, there's a small catch there. You need to be vigilant about what fruits you're eating, the quantity that you're eating, and also the types of fruits that you're eating. Don't go for fruit juices. Fruit juices can cause diabetes. You have heard it right. Fruit juices, even in non-diabetics, can push you towards diabetes because they're not good for you. Any fruit is best eaten in a natural form. So don't go for uh, fruit juices, irrespective of whether you have diabetes or don't have diabetes. So it is fruits that you need to eat because they contain fiber, they delay the fiber content in the fruit, delays the absorption of your um, fruit sugar. Hence the reason, eat it as it is. But the quantity that you consume might have to be decreased depending on the seriousness of your diabetes, depending on how bad your blood glucose levels are, how, how, con how, how your glucose control is. So take the help of a dietitian and your endocrinologist or physician who can guide you about what fruits you're eating, how much you should eat if you have diabetes. But if you don't have diabetes, great. All right. All right. Interesting. Thank you so much for that uh, very sweet advice. Uh, next question is about the burn in the feet. This is a kafi sari logon ko hota hai. Jaise jalte hai pair. Ab apne chal nahi paate hai. Or diabetes and feet burn is something lot of people experience. So Sandeep is asking this question. Sleepless nights because of burning feet. I'm really sorry. You got all my empathies. If one has diabetes and if um, diabetes is not well controlled then it can lead to various complications as I previously mentioned, and neuropathy is one such complication. When people develop neuropathy, they can develop burning sensation of the feet. Add to it, if people have vitamin B12 deficiency, it can be even worse. 
So one need to treat what is remediable. If people have hypothyroidism, treat that with uh, thyroid medication. If people have vitamin B12 deficiency, treat that with vitamin B12 supplements. And make sure that the sugar control is good. The best way to prevent this is to make sure that the blood glucose levels are under good control right from day one. Okay? Because unfortunately, what we have at our disposal to control neuropathy, that means the burning sensation in the feet, is, is uh, not always helpful. Hence the reason prevention is better than cure. And in this context, I urge everyone to make sure that you take care of feet, you take care of your blood glucose levels right from the day you develop diabetes. And don't let this severe burning sensation of the feet affect your quality of life in the later years. And Doctor, just to interrupt you here, Deepshika is the person who asked this question, but she says her diabetes is under, is under control. Yeah, unfortunately, even if the blood glucose levels are under control at this juncture, if people have had poor diabetes control in the past, or if people have had very long duration of diabetes, they can have neuropathy, painful neuropathy, which we call a sensory painful neuropathy. And there are medications that can help uh, such people. There are a lot of medications such as your gabapentin, pregabalin, and so on and so forth, which again have to be taken under the supervision of doctors. And of course, other uh, conditions need to be excluded as well, such as your vitamin B12 deficiency, hypothyroidism as well. And this is treatable. And th the best way to prevent this is to keep the blood glucose levels under good control right from day one. Right. So, uh, question from the audience that is uh, Mr. from Ms. Usha. Usha ji, uh, I just missed the question. Yes, pneumococcal vaccine ke baare mein tha. Uh, diabetic hair, so will pneumococcal vaccine help her? Yeah. Uh, there are certain vaccines for flus and, and pneumococcus that uh, people who are at risk of developing complications are supposed to take and diabetics come under this heading. So yes, you are advised to take a pneumococcal vaccine if your doctor has advised you. That is if your doctor has advised you, Mrs. Usha, please take a note of it. Yes, thank you so much Dr. Ravi Shankarji for uh, giving us so much of time and as, uh, as I was telling uh, everybody in your introduction, ki inka patient education pe kafi sara interest and that's why he's been very patient in uh, making us understand how we manage our diabetes. Thank you once again. Dr. Ravi, before we take leave from you, what are the top tips that you would advise for managing diabetes? Well, we all need to be aware of the fact that we're in the midst of a big pandemic called diabetes, diabetes and obesity. We need to ensure that we protect ourselves and our loved ones from this pandemic, as much as we do about COVID. We need to ensure that we lead a healthy lifestyle to prevent and treat diabetes. Remember, don't shy away from taking medical help if you have diabetes. In fact, you have to maintain regular periodic follow-ups, take the medications that are advocated, follow a healthy lifestyle, eat right, exercise well, sleep right, take care of your diabetes. Live healthy, live happy. Thank you. What a mantra. Thank you so much. As, uh, as always, you are really very, very uh, advocating uh, sleep as a mantra. I would take that back uh, from today on and exercise regularly, keep myself in the good food bracket. Thank you so much, Dr. Ravi Shankarji, once again. It's a pleasure. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. So that's it, uh, guys. I know a lot of questions haven't been uh, answered from the chat box, but Dr. can be consulted uh, through Apollo 24-7 uh, uh, app and you can uh, get his appointment for further details. And now moving on to health quiz. Folks, get ready. Get your fingers. Uh, get ready. I'm going to ask you three questions today. Health quiz is interesting because I'm going to ask you three questions. You can win the prize if you're the fastest finger with the right answer. Winner's name will be announced towards the end of the show and you will get a gift from Apollo 24-7. And if you're the winner, if your name is being announced on the show, you have to write back to us to claim your gift, marketing at apollo247.com and the gift will be delivered to you. So get ready. My first question for today is, which organ produces the hormone insulin? Do you know the answer? Go ahead, type it in the chat box. The first one, the first right answer will win the prize. Which organ produces the hormone insulin? Let's see if the answers have started to come in. Nahi, abhi nahi aaya hai, but ek aur chance hai. Okay, 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 okay. There are a lot of answers. Pancreas, 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 right? Let's see who's the first winner in a while. Question number two coming up your way. Get ready. Which feature 
which feature on the Apollo 247 app allows you to take the coronavirus self-risk assessment. Which feature on the Apollo 247 app allows you to take the corona self-risk assessment? Pata hai, nahi to aapka Apollo 247 app open karke dekh lijiye. Uh, the answers are still coming up from the, for the first question. Second question ke liye, mein wait kar liyo. Apollo Kavach bola hai, Reshma ne. You are almost close, but that's not the thing. Thoda baju mein dekh lijiye, aapko pata chal jayega. Check your risk is what uh, Sridhar Swami says. Sridhar Swami might be right, but let's see if somebody else also uh, texts me the right answer. Which is the rarest blood group? Question number three. Which is the rarest blood group? Answer pata hai na to Google gijiye and give me quick answer. Which is the rarest blood group? And these are my three questions as I'm waiting uh, for uh, the right answers and the winners. Ye bich mein mujhe aapko ek meeti khabar deni thi na? The sweet news that has been waiting for you all and here's the sweet news. Aapke festive season aage, aage bhi hai, aake bhi gaya hai. So let's not let the diabetes burn you out this festive season. That's why we have a sweet code. Use the code SWEET, sweet, and get 249 rupees off on consultation on an Apollo diabetes expert. So use the code and you can consult an endocrinologist or a diabetes expert on Apollo hospitals, at Apollo hospitals on Apollo 247. And here are the winners for today's health quiz. Smriti Das. Sridhar Swami and Narsimha Raju Dichpalli, congratulations, you are the winners and you have to write back to us on marketing at uh, polo247.com to claim your uh, prize. That's it folks to, for today. I'll take leave. Congratulations all the winners. And uh, before I take leave, I have to give you out the gift coupons. Apollo 247 is a gift coupon that you can use on uh, online consultation while consulting Apollo doctors on Apollo 247 app. You can get 299 rupees off on your consultations. And you can use this coupon medicine 10 to get 10% off on pharmacy orders if you're ordering from Apollo 247 app. I urge you all to download the app and get benefits after this app because I'm using my health credits each time I'm ordering my medicines on Apollo 247. All right, so folks, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today's uh, session was managing uh, diabetes with Apollo's expertise. And uh, you can share your feedback with us at marketing at Apollo247.com, which is very valuable because while presenting such kind of shows, your feedback and what all that you require makes a lot of sense for us and gives us, puts us on the right path. You can download the Apollo 247 app from Google uh, Play and App Store as well and start using the app to find out and discover more joys and more discounts. Thank you so much once again. Goodbye. See you next time.